Good afternoon, everybody. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? Good. Good. Better. It's a pleasure to be here this afternoon to share with you some of the importance of the professional image. And I just want to say at the beginning, we're not talking about fashion. This is not a fashion show. It's about something that is a lot deeper than just being trendy. And it's the psychology of the image. Why it's important. And it's important because we, when we look at somebody, you are making judgment of that person based on your past experiences. For example, you judge me immediately the moment I stepped on stage. And that's okay, even though we've been told by our parents, do not judge, it's human nature. We do judge. And your clothes, especially for you that are starting out there in the, in the professional world, are your visual resume. You wanna keep that in mind. Because it's so important that we understand that. What happens when I see somebody that I've never seen before? I'm making a connection between my data back, what my brain has taught me through my experiences, the people dress certain way, the people behave certain way, so I'm gonna say, okay, if that person is dressed with a suit, he probably is a professional, he's a smart person, trustworthy. That is what we do immediately. And that's what's gonna to happen to you when you go to your job interview. Remember, they have your resume, right? So that is the intellectual image of you. When you walk into that door, what's gonna happen is they're gonna to try to match that intellectual image with your image. And hopefully it will match. And that's what you want that it matches. It's so important that you keep in mind that. And now I'm gonna give it to uh, the, the mic to my colleague Robin because she's gonna highlight some of the things that you wanna keep in mind to keep aligned on that image and the projection that you want for your uh, interviewer to learn from you and the perception that they want, you want them to have of you. Robin? Good afternoon as well. As an image consultant and wardrobe stylist, there are a number of things that I take into consideration when working with clients. The first is their hair color. The second is their skin tone. Some people have cool skin undertones, some have warm undertones, and there are people who are neutral. Have you ever been in a place where somebody came up to you and said, boy, you look fabulous today, and you had a really bad night's sleep. Or conversely, gosh, you must be really tired, and you feel really good. It could be because of the color that you're wearing. Black is the most popular color women wear, and there are many skin tones that it doesn't reflect well on. It can make you look tired. So when you're thinking about building a wardrobe, it could, maybe you don't use black, maybe you use navy or charcoal. There's a number of colors that can be a base color for you to work with. The other thing that I consider is body type. And there are five basic body types for women. The first one is a tri, Whoop. I went the wrong way. There you go. Okay. The first one is a triangle. That is my body type. I tend to be smaller on the top and bigger on the bottom. And I'm really pretty good at camouflaging that. The second is an inverted triangle. Somebody who may have broad shoulders or a big bust line and are narrow in the hips. Uh-oh. Am I playing with this? Yes, there you go. The third is rectangle. Same on the top, same on the bottom, with no defined waist. An oval, narrow shoulders, narrow hips, and a little bit larger middle. And lastly, an hourglass, which is the same size on top and bottom with a defined waist. Now, there isn't one that's better than the other, it's just a matter of how you dress. Women, I'm afraid that we've been referred to as fruits and vegetables as well in our body types. I'll, I'll change it. So guys, 
The same principle applies for us. There are different types. We come in all sizes and shape or forms. Here's why this is important. It's the same principle that Robin said, but it, what is important is, I'm gonna go back a little bit from the beginning so you can see the train of thought here, is you're being judged, so you need to know, if my advice to you, if, if anything I can tell you today is, learn what is your body type, because, why is that so important? Because it's gonna save you time and money. When you go and shop and you start building your wardrobe, if you know your body type, you'll know you go into the store looking for the right type uh, for a guy's suit, for ladies' dresses or suits as well, the type, the right type of fabric, because not all the fabrics will match or will fit your body type, and the right colors. And the importance of this is I'm gonna I'm gonna ask Robin to explain to you why this is so important. Remember, you are being judged and they're creating images of you based on your clothes. And this is important because, Robin? You may not know this, but 65% of the population are visual learners. That means they take their, vis their cues through their eyes. If the, vi if the focus is somewhere other than your face, then they may not be listening to you. Auditory learners hear. Those people who can listen to directions and get to where they're going, whereas I need to write them down. And the last is kinesthetic, mo kinesthetic learners who learn by movement. And the reason that we want to do is we want to create balance. We want to balance the body type so that the focus does go to your face. And what people are looking for is symmetry. And the really cool thing is, is that you can fake symmetry. And balance is important because with balance come, comes comfort. You're gonna be comfortable, you're not gonna be fidgeting with your, your clothes, and the person across from you, in this case an interviewer, will be paying attention to your words and your ideas and your questions. No, like you're fidgeting, your dress is too tight, or my tie is too tight, or, am I feeling okay? That is not balance. And you're gonna be uncomfortable and that's gonna come across. And it's, a, it's something that you don't want to happen. So you have to be very, very careful with that. The other thing that we talk about, next slide, we talk about is balance also helps you to conceal your perceived flaws. We all have flaws, whatever, mine's mine, our minds, yours are yours. But also, if you know your body type, you will help yourself to, you know, reveal your assets. Because not everybody's the same height, not everybody has the same, you know, length of legs. So you could be too small. Too small or too large a bust. Too short or too tall. Too big or too flat or behind. Or too skinny legs, like I do. Or large thighs. And you know what? These are perceived th flaws. We all focus on the negative. It's how we're wired. And what we want to do is to focus on our assets. And why do we want to do that? Because one thing, again, I'm going to go back so I can, you can see my line of thought here. Image is important, you are being judged. So if you know that you're gonna be judged, here's what you wanna think about. What image do you want to project? So if you know that, then you need to know what body type you are, you need to know what kind of clothing you need to wear, you need to know what colors are good on your skin tone? All those are important. I know most people say, oh, this is fashion. It's more than fashion. This is psychology behind this, you guys, and it's so important. So many people have not gotten jobs because the way they show up, and the, that carries them. When you're dressed up, and I see a lot of guys and ladies here really well dressed, that gives you some set of confidence and the empowerment. And that comes across, that's a nonverbal communication that it opens another door a little bit for you during, the, during your interview. So you want to keep that in mind. So with that thought, I have an image here for you guys. Same person, very different outfit. 
Now, I'm not saying that this guy over here is not smart, that I don't trust him. I'm not saying that at all. But what was your immediate judgment in the first seven seconds when you look at that picture? Who would you tr probably, if you're looking for a mentor, let me put that way, who would you go to, this guy or to this guy? If you have a, a question on how to move in the professional ladder, would you go to this guy or to this guy? Those are the things that you think about. And guess what? The same thing you're thinking, your interviewer is going to be thinking about you. So you need to dress like the job that you aspire for, even if you're starting at the bottom of the ladder. That doesn't matter. So you need to, one thing that you need to do is to, once you know the organization you're going to apply for, you need to do some search, research and find out what is the organization, uh, the, the, their scope for them. Because not all of them are the same. You can, if you're an advertising agency, you can be a little more creative and they're okay. But some of them are a little more conservative. So you need to do some research on that. So this is what a business attire will look like. Okay? Very different suits, different type of guys. But one thing is consistent. The fit is all about the fit, you guys. And this, this fit, it won't help you if you don't know what. Your type of... Exactly. That's the only way you're going to know when you put something on whether it fits you right or not. And let me tell you, 99% of the times when you go to the Macy's, Nordstrom, Bloomingdale's, any store, you will need to have that suit altered. And the same goes for ladies, by the way. You need to do that. So that's your chance if, you know, if Never you're gonna out of the rack is very hard to find a perfect fit. So you're gonna have to do some talks here and talks there. So that will help if you know your body type. Next slide. Yes. So we have all heard about business casual. It's now from suit and tie to flip flop and shorts, guys. It's not what that means. It means you're still doing business. You're still in the business environment. So again, you need to understand what is the culture, what is the dress code of that company that you are working before you jump into the business uh, casual. Because you can be too casual. And again, just because you had an interview, just because you got the job, doesn't mean that people will not continue to judge you on how you dress from that point on. Believe me, they will judge you every day as you're there. So you need to keep that in mind. So business casual, it's important. Now, formal. I know that you're probably not going to get invited to any formal event, maybe in the first year. But this is something for what I want you to consider. It's an investment. Having a tuxedo is an investment. And this is the new look now. Uh, so, what is, is this helpful? Helpful because if you get a black suit, you can dress it up and make it look like a tuxedo without much investment, and you can then wear it for your day-to-day -day work as well. So, now I'm not saying that the old version or the version of the tuxedo we all know is outdated. Not saying that at all. But this is uh, another version that you want to consider in the future as an investment, ladies. We're a little luckier. There was a time when all we were allowed to wear was a black suit, a gray suit, and a navy suit, and a white shirt. Now actually that look has come back in again. Um, the younger people seem to like it. But that was it. That was our choices if we wanted to move up the ladder. Now we have more options. We can wear color. We can wear a dress. And we can be more creative. Like Orlando said, if you're going to be um, on an interview for an architect position or an interior designer or advertising, you might be a little more creative like the lady on the far, my far left. I want to take just a couple of minutes to go over the possibilities for ladies. Um, it's a little harder to try and build a wardrobe, and you can do it with nine basic pieces. And I'm going to have to put the mic down, so I'm going to talk loudly if I can. Please let me know if you can hear. And let's make this go back. Now I pulled these from my closet. And what I found out was that I don't have a basic black suit. 
So I did my best to create one. And black is a good color for me, so I do have that. And what I want you to think about is two jackets, three tops, and three bottoms. So my suggestion is if you go out and get a suit, get a matching skirt and the matching pants to the jacket. Now my second jacket, my second outfit is also a suit. And they can all mix and match. Three tops, basic white blouse in this case, a black tank, and a shot of color. did that, what I would suggest is popping it with a little color. The other thing about a black top and a black bottom, it's referred to as a column of color, and it can make you look taller and thin. And the same goes true for the white blouse. And you can take this and take it across the black pants, the black skirt, the gray skirt, depending upon your mood. Is this making sense so far? If you take these pieces, you can actually make 27 outfits. Some without the jacket, some with the jacket. Okay, maybe I want to add. I'm getting tired of wearing these same pieces. I'd like a little bit. I already have a pink top. Why don't I add a pink jacket? It works with the black tank. It works with the white tank. It works with the pink tank works with the black pants and the black skirt. I don't like it so much with gray. You can add another blouse. Just change the color. You can switch your scarf. It's that easy. Okay, we want to add maybe a little bit more. Maybe I want to print. It works beautifully black, back to the black. And I'm going to add white pants. Because the white pants are going to go with every single jacket that I have. Well, the dress was on sale too. So I decided to buy that as well. I can wear it as a jacket dress. I can wear the black jacket over it. Or Oh, and I forgot to tell you, I also got the matching pants to the suit. And lastly, maybe a business casual day. I can wear the black pants, the black skirt, and tie this around my neck. And the same goes true for business casual for women. There's a huge difference between casual and business. Business casual is just slightly dressed down. Thank you. And then I want to touch just a little bit on accessories. Accessories are kind of like the icing on the cake. They dress things up. I would suggest in an interview to keep them simple. And for ladies, your shoes. Um, Quite often I see ballet flats, they're a little casual. If in fact you have to wear a shoe, a flat shoe, give it just a tiny bit of a heel and let it be a little bit dressier. You can wear a lower heel, you can wear a higher heel, but my suggestion is to do a closed toe. You can't see my navy blue toe polish. And for us guys, one word, simple. Keep it simple, simple. Just to give you some examples, a simple watch, clean lines. I know that the, the 
trend now is those big bulky watches, which some of them are very nice. You can wear those, but try to avoid the bling, all right? Especially in the interview. You can use the tie bar, you can use a pocket square, belt, you can be a little creative with the belt. And also, if you want to bring it up a notch, you can use cuff links. Uh, and our socks now, it's where we can be creative. That we got some freedom there now. And also with the ties, we can be a little creative. Again, don't go crazy, just keep it within reason of creativity. Something that to add to your wardrobe. Because, remember, like we said at the beginning, 65% of the population are visual, and you're being judged for the way you're being you're dressed. And what is on paper, but when you walk into that door, they're looking at you and they're sizing you from t t uh, head to toe in less than seven seconds, they already have an impression of you. So that's why it's so important. And because if people are visual, we want to keep away from the, distra the distractions. For, for example, your nails, ladies, Beautiful nails, but try to keep it simple, too artsy, can be a distraction. Your posture, when you sit down, I know you're nervous, you're probably sweating, try to sit straight, that will help you calm your nerve and breathe deeply. And your clothes will f look better if you're sitting straight. Do not chew gum during an interview, please. Whatever you do, if you have to do it, just to keep your mouth not too dry, do it and before you go right in, try to throw it out, don't forget it. I get that, been there, done that myself. Um, shoes, ladies and gentlemen, please polish them, keep them clean. Because you're gonna be sitting down and because there's the desk, you might cross you know, your legs or you might get up when you walked in to you know, greet you and they go, like, oh my God, look at those shoes. That's what, they're shaking your hand and they're like, did he or she did not take care of those shoes? That's what they're thinking. All right, so you want to make sure. The other thing that we want to talk about a little bit, and I'm going to let Robin to address this, is this sleeveless dress. And we know it's a new trend, but I want her to address that point for, for the ladies. Whether you like her or not, Michelle Obama changed the way women dress. She bared her arms. And she has fabulous arms. But when you're going into a job interview, Look at the two candidates. If you look at the gentleman, you can see skin, his hands, his face. On the woman, you can see her legs, her arms, and her face. There's an opportunity there for the eye to wander around. That's my only suggestion. So maybe a jacket or a cardigan would be your good friend for an interview. Ladies. <laughs> Whether a man's interviewing you or a woman's interviewing you, if you're showing cleavage, they're going to look. It's just na human nature. Okay. This is not human nature. All right? <laughs> this should not be human nature. You don't want to be comfortable. There's a difference between tight and fitted. This is what tight looks like. If fitted, you would not see any of that skin, all right? So you have to pay attention. Again, make it the length so you don't forget your body type. If this person, these two people here wouldn't know their body type, that would not be happening because they would have gotten what is appropriate for them. Another thing, the next slide, uh, is the opposite, baggy clothes. Please, do not wear baggy clothes. It's not a way, if you, you perceive flaws, you want to hide them, that's not the best way to do it. Because baggy clothes sent completely negative message about you. It says that you're unkept, you're not trustworthy, you don't care about your image, and if you don't care about something so close to you as your personal image, why should I trust you to give you a job to care for? So that's why you don't want to do that. And for ladies, please, the same, you don't want to look like the back lady. So again, body type, fit, not tight, fit. Because for ladies, you don't want to look like you're going to go to a club right after work. So this is something that you want to keep in mind. 
some other distractions, being disheveled or wrinkled. Now I have a son who just graduated from college last spring, and occasionally I will see him go out in a pair of khakis that had been draped over his ham hamper or standing in a corner of his room. You know they're not pressed. And I know that's never happened to any of you all. As well, make sure your hair is combed. If you're wearing light makeup, not too heavy. And perfume and aftershave. These days there are so many allergies. And then we've all walked behind people that, you know, they were there 10 minutes ago and their fragrance has still lasted. Or what happens if you go into an interview and no, somebody, your interviewer doesn't like the fragrance you're wearing? And all they can think about is, I can't wait for them to get up. So maybe we just save that for another time. And to round it up, you guys, um, what is well dressed? Again, fit color, texture, fabric. These are the things that you want to think about. And also, you have to be cautious because um, the sale people that you will see in many other stores in this area, they are well-intentioned, but they, you sometimes don't really know they're there to sell. And they say, what do you think about this? Like, oh, it looks good. Uh, you know how many, <laughs> how many times I've been in a store, minding my own business, and I look and I'm like, no, it doesn't, but I don't say anything because it's, you know, but I, I've been so close. But you have to be careful because they're there to help you and they got the best, best intention. But if you don't know your body type, you don't know what colors good look, uh, good look on you, that's going to be a problem. You're going to be investing and wasting your money. For ladies, the same principle applies. I want to emphasize when you buy a suit, ladies, like, like happened to us guys, Make sure that if it needs to be fitted, you take care of that. The long sleeve is going to make you look shorter. Sometimes you should not have any bulging in the back. The length of the jacket, those are the little details that you want to make sure that they're taking care of. And the casual, you want it to be taken seriously. So business casual, business and casual. Know the difference between the three. And you'll know that when you start working at work. The first thing, the best thing you can do is overdress. When you start a new job, overdress. That way, you can always, for like, we can take the jacket off, we can take the tie off, eh, but until you get to know what is the dress code of the organization so you don't make a fool of yourself. And I want to add to that real quickly. If you've got an interview, go to the corporate website. Look at the executives. What are they wearing? And then pattern yourself after them because that's ultimately, I'm guessing, what you're headed for. We have a few handouts for you. Two for the ladies. One on the effect of lines and fit. It could be horizontal lines, vertical lines, or even seaming can make you look slimmer or add a little bit of width to your body. And some tips that we covered here today. In addition, it has my information on it. Feel free to reach out and ask any questions and we'll be here afterwards as well. We also have a handout for you gentlemen. The basic wardrobe essentials, things to remember, and it has Orlando's contact information on it. Thank you so much and Thank we're you. glad to answer any questions.